Monday, August 17th, 2020, meeting of the Market City Commission, special budget meeting of the Market City Commission is now called to order at 5.15 p.m. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, roll call, please. Commissioner Bonsall? Here. Commissioner Davis? Here. Commissioner Frazier? Here. Commissioner Schlegel? Here. Commissioner Stonehouse? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Here. Mayor Smith? Here. Thank you. We've got all members present this evening. Commissioners, we have an agenda in front of us. Do we have a motion on this agenda? Commissioner Frazier? I make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Thank you. Do we have a second? Commissioner Bonzel? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed? Yes. All opposed, please say no. Motion passes 7-0. Uh, I have no announcements this evening. Moving on to public comment. May not exceed three minutes per person. Do we have anyone for public comment this evening? Uh, yes, I'm just doing a, a quick scan here. There are, there's no one in the Zoom waiting room. We do have one written public comment that was submitted in advance of the meeting. Uh, and it comes from Margaret Brum. The comment is, as the city is discussing its promotional budget, I am suggesting that it would be prudent to switch the focus on promoting Marquette to updating signs and maps of city landmarks. The map below is what is given out by Moosewood Nature Center when people ask for a map of the island. It is dated 1995 and is out of date. Updating this one map to show parking allowed areas and no parking areas would truly be helpful to the tourists unfamiliar with the island. Also, the rules about the road being one way, the no smoking and no dog rules could be added. Finally, there could be clearly stated that if your vehicle is too big and or too bulky for a one-way narrow seasonal road, don't drive it around the island. The map could be put on the city website and also be printed out for visitors. And that is the only comment. Thank you. With no additional public comment, public comment is now closed. Next up, we have consent agenda. Commissioners, do we have a motion on consent? Commissioner Bonzel? I move that we approve the consent agenda as written. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Second that motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, yes. please say no. Motion passes 7-0. Moving on to new business. Tonight we have uh, more budget conversations and we're going to talk about the police department and also community services. So I will turn it over to city manager and our CFO. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Commissioners. Uh, tonight, before we jump into the budget, uh, just one bit of unfinished business from last time is uh, page 11. And that's the official title is the Future Committed Funds List, but we like to call it the Sleeping Dragons List. And I really don't have anything to comment on other than this is presenting things that really aren't in the budget. It shows our underfunded liabilities, like our pension and retiree health. And it also shows capital lay projects that we know are at some point are going to hit us upside the head, but we just aren't sure when. So this is just kind of our list to make sure it's out there in front of us and we don't forget about it. So I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it and if you have any questions, but I just did want to point out that on page 11. Is there a Prince Charming's list too? There is no Prince Charming list this time. Prince Charming's are things that we after the department heads submit their budgets that maybe as a balancing measure we had to take out in order to get the budget to balance and then if we get additional funding throughout the year we'll go to that list and that's what we'll add on to the budget this year we didn't have to do that but the caveat is we still don't know what the state is going to do with state revenue sharing and act 51 funds so we will be prepared to uh react to that at the time but as of the time being there's not a prince charming list thank you Go ahead. i have a question on um the uh lakeshore boulevard um didn't 
Is that twelve million dollars in addition to what the money we've already received, or is that? No, that is the uh, entire project. We're going to attack it in at least two different phases. Phase one is really almost complete. So, of that twelve million, phase one is included in that total. We are just presenting the whole thing as one project. So we need like three million dollars or something. Yeah, I believe the city match for both phases is going to be end up closing to three point seven million dollars, if I recall. And then we were getting grants for the the uh, remainder of that. Thank you. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. I know we touched on it last time. I think we can move on to the police department. Correct. Uh, next, uh, tonight we'll start out with uh, Police Chief Blake Rebolt, and then we'll go into our most popular, highly rated show, the John Swinson Show. So, uh, if Blake, if you could start out on page 132, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, good evening, Commissioners. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight to present our budget. Um, I would like to take a moment to introduce um, Clerical Dispatcher Tracy Phillips, that is to my right, your left, and then Captain of the Patrol Division, Michael Orla. Um, the three of us collaborated on this year's budget um, and worked together to help develop it and, and work together here tonight to present it. So um, I want to thank both of them for their efforts uh, in preparing this. I will start off on page 132. Um, it's going to be the fiscal fact sheet. Um, basically, the police department is made up of 39 employees. Uh, we have 34 sworn police officers. We have four clerical dispatchers, and we have one parking enforcement. Um, some of the assignments are listed below in the program statistics. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on them. Um, but that's kind of the uh, initial fact sheet. Are there any questions? <coughs> Do you have any questions on the fact sheet? I'm looking around, I'm not seeing any. Okay, go ahead, Blake, thank you. Uh, the next would be page uh, 133. Um, that is the uh, fee schedules and uh, various uh, violations. Um, we did not change anything from the um, fee schedule this year. Uh, if you remember last year, we did have to change the fireworks ordinance. Uh, the fee schedule for the year, the fee or fine for fireworks had to be added to the fee schedule, so we did that last year. Um, I know we are anticipating um, a public hearing on the smoking on the beach ordinance coming up, um, and Captain Loyola has worked with the clerk on developing a fee for that, um, and that will be added uh, once that's done. But other than that, there was nothing else added to that. Any questions on the fee schedule? This was, this was updated probably two years ago when I took over as chief. Um, I was asked to go back and uh, increase the fees. Based on what we're seeing right now, I think the fee schedule matches what we uh, expect here in the community. So I don't anticipate having to raise that right now at this point. Commissioner, is there any question on the fee schedule? I did think of something, though, about personnel. If I... Okay. Um, if schools are going to go online um, at, at any point, um, I imagine that may or may not change your budget, or did it change the budget this year when they had to go online? Um, I, not right now. Um, we've been in contact with uh, Mr. Saunders, and it's still kind of up in the air on how this is all going to play out. Um, but based on um, what happens with the schools, if you're talking particularly about the school liaison or the school resource officer, uh, we still have a lot of kids that we have to deal with in the community, and uh, their focus will be dealing not with any of those situations. A uh, perfect example would be uh, the uh, um, spray painting that we were experiencing at the lighthouse. Um, the juvenile individuals that were involved in that incident, um, the cases were handled by our youth services and our um, school detectives. Sounds Does that good. answer your question? Yeah, thank you. That's a useful clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. I think we can go on to page 137. Is that right? Yep, we go to 137. Uh, just a couple of things I want to highlight, and I noted those. You can see them on the bottom of page 138. Um, 
The first one would be an additional $30,000 addition to the operating budget. Uh, we did that this year. Um, every five years, our bulletproof vests have to be up updated per our uh, insurance policy. They have to be replaced. Uh, the life expectancy of a bulletproof vest is uh, right at five years. Uh, our vests are due. We've got these ones five, almost four and three quarter years ago. Um, the Department of Justice, uh, through the Bulletproof uh, Partnership, uh, offers a grant which Captain Laurela applied for and we received, and that's a 50% match. So we have to pay the initial money, um, get the best implemented, and then they reimburse us um, for the half of the cost of the best. So um, that's been done in the past, and Gary is well familiar with it, or very familiar with it. Uh, but it's something we have to do every five years if we're up to do that. So that was added in the operating. Um, as most of you probably are aware, we uh, received a uh, $10,000 uh, donation from Charter Spectrum for the purchase of the new K9. We are currently in the process of purchasing that. Uh, part of that will be additional travel uh, for the K9 handler uh, to the academy in the Lower Peninsula for five weeks of training. Um, I did add $1,000 to the transportation budget just to assist us in, in dealing with those costs. Uh, most of the dog has already been paid. Actually, all the dog has already been paid for, um, but I just wanted to add a little bit to this budget for that transportation. Um, and then the second one would be, or the third one, I'm sorry, would be 963, and that would be training. Uh, that was an additional $3,000. Um, that's to offset some of the canine training, but it's also we're anticipating with uh, the logistics and, and what's going on currently in our nation um, that uh, we're anticipating some uh, increase in training uh, regarding some of the issues that we're experiencing. So uh, we're trying to just to get ahead of that uh, a little bit. Also, uh, the um, MCOLS, uh, grant, which you'll see a little bit farther down the road, uh, continue, continues to decrease their contribution to us. Um, and basically that's based off of um, the ticket revenues statewide is being redistributed to the police departments throughout the state per the number of officers you have on your department. And that money is used for training officers. And that money continually decreases every year. And at the MACP conference uh, this last winter, um, the MCOLS director, uh, Tim Burgoyce, uh, said that's going to continue before, or it's going to get worse before it gets better as far as funding. So what we're trying to do is have a little bit of extra training money to ensure that we are receiving the proper training that we need here at the market. Um, that's the basically the um, revenue and expenditures section. Are there any questions on that? Those are just the three highlights that I wanted to bring up. Questions on the police budget. Um, Commissioner Banza? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, I just had two brief questions. Um, first, uh, Chief Rebolt, uh, thank you so much for all that information um, and for everything you're all doing at the police department. I was just curious, and I understand if you don't have this data available right now, but if we could just get a, a more, slightly more detailed breakdown of the fines and forfeits revenue line item. I'm just Really, I'm just interested to see how much of that revenue is from fines and how much of it is from like civil asset forfeiture and that kind of thing. Um, if you can answer okay. that question now, that would be great. But if not, I completely understand. Okay, well, if you could just repeat that, so it came through a little bit. Yeah, my apologies. Um, um, so just a little bit more of a breakdown on, under the fines and forfeits revenue item. Um, sure just interested to see how much of that revenue um, is from fines and how much of it is from like asset forfeiture. Yeah. I can try to get a breakdown on that for you. That would be this great. Year is, this year has obviously been a little bit um, unique. Um, but yes, I can definitely work on getting if I could add to um, this line item is strictly for fines. We have a separate fund, which will be the next fund presented called drug forfeitures. That's where if there are any asset forfeitures, the, those assets will go into that fund. So in the 101, 301, that account is strictly just fines that they're doing. Okay, yeah, th thank you. I, I appreciate that, that clarification. Um, 
My only other uh, question was just uh, with regards to, uh, I think, as you, as you mentioned, you know, we see the department is asking for a, uh, an increase in local training funds. Um, I'm just curious if, you know, you, if that's just planning for a potential increase in future training requirements, or if you have specific ideas of additional training you might like to pursue, especially with regards to salient issues that you kind of alluded to, like de-escalation, racial bias, helping survivors of sexual assault, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, those, those are those are some of the items that we anticipate uh, looking at. We've kind of been ahead of that game already. Um, we've set two of our officers downstate to become fair and unbiased policing instructors. So they're actually certified to instruct police officers throughout the state on fair and unbiased policing. Um, what I noticed is, and, and going back a little bit with the MCOLs and, and the training funds that are supplied by the state, um, is that money is kind of drying up. And, and a perfect example would be uh, the training consortium at NMU. Um, basically, that, that training opportunity at NMU or that consortium organization was funded by a grant from MCOLs. And they've been unable to issue grants for the last two years. So that current training uh, facility at Northern is actually being, the bill is being flipped by Northern. They're paying for additional police training. So it's been a real asset for us being in Marquette, being able to utilize that training. However, as we move forward, we see that um, as, as, a, as probably one of the biggest departments north of Midland, um, we're seeing a higher demand and a, and a higher level of expectation regarding training uh, for our officers. So we're trying to get ahead of the curve a little bit there also, um, and that's why we're adding that. Um, and as I said, with everything going on right now, um, I, I anticipate some mandated training down. I mean, a lot of what we got covered was through our accreditation process, uh, which we are working on our second year of being accredited. Um, and so a lot of those training issues will be identified as we kind of navigate through that. No, thank you for that information and, and for those efforts. It's very important. So I appreciate it. Mayor Pro uh, Two questions. One is um, the liquor license revenue. Um, just it, it it's going down pretty substantially every year. Is there just been a change, or is it the number of bars hasn't changed? I don't think in town. So just real high level overview of how that changed because it's gone from fifty thousand. Is that 50 or 30? 50? Yeah, 50,000 in 2017 to 12,000 in 2020. Yeah, so with the liquor license uh, revenue, so basically uh, all the liquor license establishments in Marquette um, through, the, through the LCC um, pay a fee or pay certain, um, they have to pay to have those liquor licenses. Yep. And money is redistributed to us from the LCC. So we don't really have control over that revenue. It's not like we're going out and looking for violations and, and, and charging fines for those violations. The money is distributed to us by the Liquor Control Commission here in Michigan. Um, and that money is used for us to do liquor inspections on the, on the bars. So that, that, the reason that's going down is it's kind of like with the MCO situation. We don't have control over the money. They're distributing that money throughout the state based on the number of liquor licenses you have within your jurisdiction. And if I could say too, um, yeah. like in 2017 and I think uh, 19, um, really in those two years, there was a supplemental appropriation done by the state. Uh, normally we are seeing, you know, somewhere in the $20,000, but Every now and then the state will do a supplemental appropriation in which that kicks that amount up. Um, That's correct. And then uh, just a, another high level question. The total revenues are 225, 120 for one, but total ex, no. So there's, I hit the wrong. Um, but total expenditures are are substantially more. Um, so is the general fund making up that difference or there's other funds that are kicking in and they're just not shown in that sheet? Is that how it works? No, uh, this is part of the general fund. So um, all the general fund items are, are, you know, they don't really don't pay for themselves and they're 
largely paid for in part by property taxes and state revenue sharing. So that would be everything, pretty much everything that was presented at the first session, and then the police department, and then some parks and rec uh, things. So really anything that's considered a general fund, which, it, which is anything that starts out with our 101, that would be general fund, and then that is paid for by mostly property taxes and state revenue sharing. Thank you. Anything else on this section of the police department? It looks like we've got a couple more sections to get through, so there would still be time to ask Blake. Okay, we can move on to the drug forfeiture fund. Thanks, Blake. Okay, so the drug forfeiture fund is, is uh, Gary's worst nemesis. Um, and this is something that's been, um, that we've had as long as I've been working here at the police department. If you remember back in the, uh, the 90s, when drug forfeiture was a big um, revenue source for a lot of communities, um, that's not the case anymore. So this is this is revenue that's been kind of accumulated over a period of time, and we've kind of just left alone in case we use, need to use it for some type of uh, emergency, like uh, canines. Uh, we've used some of it to help supplement canine training and the purchase of the canine vehicle and the enclosures and stuff. But really, you don't. I, you know, I just kind of keep this here. Um, in case we need to use it for some type of an emergency. So um, we don't get the, the forfeitures that we used to get um, in the past. Uh, the state has mandated uh, additional restrictions and has really kind of clamped down on how and, and when you can forfeit property. So um, that's basically what the forfeiture fund is. Any questions on the forfeiture fund? I don't think so. Okay. And then the, the last on page uh, 141 um, is basically the criminal justice training fund. And this is the money that is allocated uh, to uh, the Marquette Police Department and all um, police municipalities throughout the state based on the number of officers that you have. And this money is given to the agencies to help train on the mandatory trainings like firearms. Uh, uh, active shooter, uh, low light, um, uh, policy and procedures, um, legal update, and driving. Uh, those are the these are the, the mandated training that we must have on a yearly basis. AED training, CPR, and stuff like that. First aid. Uh, so we use that money coupled with the money that basically we match in, in the in the uh, the previous training fund that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, basically, we match this, but we've increased it a little bit on our end uh, to anticipate the decreasing uh, amount of money that we're getting from the state. And that's basically what this uh, fund is for. Strictly just a training. And if there's any questions on that, any questions, commissioners? Okay, I don't think so. And that's kind of, again, I guess, those are the uh, three sections that we're required to cover, but I'm more than happy to answer any other questions that anybody may have regarding uh, the proposed budget for this year. Well, if we think of any, we will be sure to let you know, Chief Rebold. And I know um, you said you would get one piece of information back to us, so we look forward to seeing that. We appreciate all the efforts that you and the police department do. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, we're now ready for our popular John Swinson show. So John, if you could start on page 143 and please uh, be brief in your comments. Thank you. All right, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to start off by um, stating that uh, I guess I'm I'm super proud of the team of professionals that uh, that I have working for me. I have uh, all of them here uh, with us tonight um, to help answer questions as we go along. Um, I did ask them just for um, a little bit of background information on 
all the things we've done differently this year in light of the pandemic. And I got uh, seven pages of responses. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm not going to, uh, to go over all that, but I would like to point out just a couple of things as we get started here. Um, I think that, uh, you know, during these difficult times, our community has experienced a lot of things that maybe they wouldn't, such as depression, anxiety, isolation, um, and, you know, in some cases, despair. And I, I really think that my staff has done a really great job of um, finding the ways that we can truly serve the community um, through our uh, department and all the, the things that we offer to uh, the residents. Um, just a few of those, um, Parks and Recreation really kind of took it upon themselves um, to look for ways that we could ease the tension. So there's been a lot of refunds um, that we were able to give without fees. Um, and those, you know, came from tourist parks, marinas, um, and some of the, the Prescott Park facilities. Um, and as everyone knows, uh, Lakeview Arena um, took it upon themselves to become a shelter for um, the Room at the End folks. Um, during the stay home, stay safe order. And we've continued that through the, um, the evening hours uh, as we've gone forward. Other things, yeah, as we get into arts and culture and the senior center, um, we can talk a little bit more in the budget pages themselves, but um, I felt arts and culture really did a great job of going out and um, providing virtual opportunities uh, to our community. Um, and they've, they've done that by updating the community calendar um, and reaching out uh, through social media. I think we've more than doubled our, our followers on Facebook, um, as well as um, some neat initiatives that um, are out there like uh, Marquette Memory Box and uh, a lot of the um, senior uh, arts were, went virtual, which uh, was neat that we were able to do that. And then last, the, um, but certainly not least, the senior center was uh, a sense of, or a source of great anxiety during this pandemic for us. We felt that, that was the most vulnerable population. I think the staff's done a great job of, um, you know, checking in with over 200 clients uh, to make sure that everyone's doing well. Um, you know, working with masks for Marquette to uh, get uh, 1,200 seniors masks and um, and then a lot of virtual stuff um, on, on as well as countless other things that I won't. I won't take your time to mention, but I, I guess I just wanted to point out that it's a it's a weird year, and I'm I'm really proud of how we stepped up to the plate and kind of knocked it out of the park for the community. So um, that's my intro, and I know Blake took about uh, 20 minutes or so, um, and I can't can't say I'll be quite that quick. I have about 40 pages to go. Um, I'll try and do my best. Um, well, thank so you, John. Gary, we just concluded your session, so thank you. Um, page 143 is promotional funds. Uh, just the background um, for city commissioners that haven't been on the commission uh, for oh, quite a while. Um, this was started back in the day. Groups used to come forward with uh, asks of the city commission to waive this fee or waive that fee. And um, we really took it forward and, and kind of created a, a system that puts all that into one place and that's right here during the budget process and allows you to um, take those asks almost like a grant system and uh, put them all in one place. And it's really saved a lot of pain and suffering, I think on the commission's part um, and put it into a real formal process that I think works fairly well. Um, page 144 outlines um, the expenditures. The um, fee relief, you'll see um, on the right hand side, $61,260. And if you look back, you might question why that's so much more than 2017 or 18 or 19 even. Um, and the reality there is that uh, we asked for almost $60,000 uh, last year, and if we had not had COVID, um, we would have spent somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 45000 
groups ask for what they think they might possibly need uh, during fee relief, and they don't always um, use all those dollars. So that's something to be to make note of. Um, I think that as you look at the all the ones laid laid out there, um, the uh, new events. Uh, I guess I would point out the DDA has drive-in movies, which I think is a really neat concept, and, um, and so we put that forward. Uh, they did drop uh, the Verga Fest, I believe. Um, so they they added one, took one away. Um, the Harvest Fest. Then, um, if we look at the ones that have increased, uh, NIMSA has increased. A little bit. They're doing a little bit more programming this year. The UP 200 uh, saw their fees uh, being a little bit larger than than normal. So they're they're uh, asking for a little more. And the fireworks committee. Um, I guess the final note on page 144 really is that um, these just due to COVID, unfortunately, we weren't able to have events this year. Um, so. If we see that $10,000 worth of fee relief, I guess I'd be surprised what we have there, but it's been drastically reduced. I don't know if you want to go so far as calling that a silver lining, um, but it's a reality. So, um, any other questions on 143 or 44? Commissioner Stonehouse? This is essentially fee relief, right? In other words, we're not giving the yes. money, it's money we're not receiving. Right. Um, so the everything outlined um, in the small print that's hard to see there um, is fee relief. At the very bottom, there are let's see um, the expenditures of seven thousand dollars for city band and fifteen thousand dollars for beautification. Those are the only cash um, funded items, and there's. Some statutory reasons why those are the only ones that ever qualify for cash, um, but those would be things that are considered to be a service to the city. So right. the application uses that for flowers, um, and the city band uses that for other productions that they put on in the city. Those Thank are the only cash items. Thank you very much. Yep. Other questions in this section? Okay. Can move on to Community Services Administration. Thanks, John. I know you can't see us, but we're nodding uh, our heads. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, just keep telling me that because I can't see any of that. So, um, Community Services Administration. So, really, this is kind of the administrative things that oversee, um, you know, all the special events, uh, the parks facilities, planning, development, management of all that, um, as well as um, you know, doing research and you know, putting out uh, department newsletters and, and things of that nature. Included in, um, we have a separate fact sheet for the for the ball fields and the pavilion. And I think next year I want to kind of clean that up a little bit, but I'll just kind of make mention here. Um, it looks like our edits to the FY 2021 uh, salaries didn't get in there on that sheet. We'll have to get with Gary after that and make sure that, that was added in. Maybe I didn't save it after I did it. Um, the hours rented on 145, um, I guess, you know, a lot of that, you know, was affected by, by COVID. Um, you'll see the baseball numbers are around 530. Um, so there's, there's some reduction in, in 2020 just due to that. Um, as we get into, you know, page 146, um, the soccer fields also uh, had some issues um, regarding that. Um, the 25 events were prior to COVID. Uh, so there's that. Um, but then the only other thing I guess I point out on 146, um, the rowing club, I have a note to talk with Gary about that. We should probably have, um, have that uh, Started like Superior Watershed Partnership is. They did some improvements to their facility, and uh, most of that rent is is waived, as we'll as we'll mention later on in the in the budget. Not waived, but um, 
payment in lieu of uh, the improvements that they made. So, any questions on 145 or 146? Go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, because I was part of this several years ago, uh, this and this is a definitely a little bit of an aside from right now, but um, the Superior Watershed Partnership was going to pay off the solar panel, and then it was going to be ours. That's probably a, I don't know where that ever ended up. And it was going to become the city's. Did that ever happen? And that can be taken offline and talked about later. But it, it, that's thoughts occurred to me as we were going through this. It should have been paid off by now. Do you know that, Gary? Uh, I'll make note of that, and I'll, I'll check into that. Um, I, we have been monitoring their their bills, and it has been uh, paying for um, most, of, if not all, of their expenses in the in the summer. But as far as the actual capital, um, I'll check into that. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Any on, other questions? On page one forty five or one forty six. Okay, moving on, John. Thank you. Yep. Uh, 147 is um, the ball fields and, and the pavilion. Um, there is some, uh, I guess, discrepancy in the way that we put the, the wages in there. Um, we actually, um, the 2021 version is a more realistic version of how we actually pay people and the hours they use. So the way HR kind of calculates that, they take the number of positions and then max it out by the maximum amount of time that uh, we could have them working if they work 40 hours for, say, six months. And that's how you get that uh, 27000 for 2020. We didn't spend anywhere near that. Um, so there's, there's, we'll kind of clean that up in the future, but um, the wages that are shown there are what we expect. Um, and then the... Uh, the revenue hours is actually um, that's actually the the log style inside pavilion that everybody loves at Presque Isle, and so we're going to see a greatly reduced amount of revenue from that this year. I think uh, you know we're estimating around 200, and um, and that's just a a fact of of you know renting an indoor space in this particular time. So. Um, also, reduced amount of alcohol permits may even come in less than the 50. So, any questions on uh, 147? Not seeing any, John. Go ahead. Okay. Um, page 148 is just our fee structure um, for park facilities, um, 148 and 149. And I um, do not have any changes to this set of fees uh, for this year. So um, of note, uh, we were going to look at changing how we charge baseball and soccer activities. Um, but due to COVID, we didn't really have any. And so we were unable to uh, gain the data that we needed uh, to determine how much they're actually practicing and using the field outside of the fee structure. So. Um, we're just going to run the same same plan that we had last year and uh, do that analysis uh, in the next year. Hopefully, we have youth sports uh, on the field in a normal manner uh, next summer. So, any questions on those two pages, 148 and 149? Oh, we're good, Jim. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so now we get into um, Page 150, uh, Community Services, uh, Revenue and Expenditures. So this is, um, as I said before, the, the um, administration of Parks and Recreation. Um, I guess some things that I would point out um, on this right away. Um, unfortunately, we were unsuccessful with that uh, trust fund grant, um, the first line item. Uh, $300,000 we were hoping to get revenue from the state in 2020, uh, but we did resubmit that grant and we're hoping to uh, get that in 2021 and we'll know sometime around New Year's. Um, so those dollars got switched over from one year to the next. Um, so that's of note. Um, 
Hey, John, I'm going to pause you for a second. Please. Something funny is going on on our screen. It's kind of like a, a rave disco party. <laughs> and I'm wondering if our viewers are able to see what you're showing. You can keep going, but I just wanted to point it out. Maybe we can check it out behind the scenes okay. here. Technology, you got to love it when it works and hate it when it doesn't. It could, um, it could just be our screens so, here. Okay. Um, the athletic field, the revenues from that, um, both soccer and baseball, um, are going to be reduced for this fiscal year, and we have them slated to be back up to normal amounts uh, for next uh, fiscal year. So um, you'll see that reflected in the budget. Um, and then if we get down into uh, see the, the reimbursement, um, so private sources, that $300,000 is um, from Marquette Playgrounds for All, so um, the fundraising that would go along with Playgrounds. And then um, the other reimbursements below that are uh, promotional funds towards this account, so things that would hit this account from the promotional funds. And then as we get into um, the wages, um, John, could I please ask have... one question? I just was wondering if you yeah. could give us an update on the, the grant for that playground at Lower Harbor. I think you updated us not too long ago. If I remember right, it was maybe January that we would hear. Yeah, so we typically hear it's either a Christmas or a New Year's present. Um, okay, so, thank you. Um, we're, we're hoping to hear by then. Perfect, thanks. Yep. I, yep. I would ahead, just Mr. like to David. follow up to that, you know, and I, I appreciate that you gave us a little update to that, and I'm glad that it's still on the, um, on the docket for the future. I do have some concerns about raising the $300,000 in private donations, and I have them because um, the donors for the William Park have had their money sitting there for quite some time, and I fear that if we don't move forward with the Williams Park, that they would be, you know, these are local foundations, local service clubs, and many individuals who have donated, and those funds at this point are six years old. So maybe I would feel better if you told me where the Williams Park is, if it's going to happen anytime future. And, you know, there's 91 different donors that we have, you know, and they've raised like over $41,000. So. Just, I, I would feel better if I know that we were actually using that money so that they are then more willing to donate to the 300000 that we need for the um, Playgrounds for All. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I, I, it's a little fuzzy as far as audio, but I think you said the Williams Park? <laughs> the the Williams Park, Park, yeah. Yeah, so um, the funds there, um, we were anticipating building that this year. Um, however, um, state uh, grant agencies uh, have been experiencing some of the similar things that we have, so furloughs and workloads. Um, so we've had the bid package um, at the state for, uh, I suppose, it's been, it's been since COVID started, like right around there, and we just heard back uh, this month with all of the um, the grant coordinator had some questions and we've worked with the uh, prime professional to answer those questions and adjust a couple of things. So um, we have that submitted to her um, and we're waiting for the go ahead to bid that out. Um, as we were looking at the timetable because of those delays, uh, that may be a spring project now, but um, we are ready to move forward with that. Um, the timetables don't look like we can get it done before snowfall, and we're worried that if they have to mobilize twice, it would be. So, um, quite so a bit more I guess help me to understand so, if, if your projection is that it won't happen until the new fiscal year, why it would not be reflected in this budget? Yeah, so that's a, um, what we do with an expense that goes from one year to the next is we encumber those dollars. So it was approved in a previous budget. At the year end, we, uh, we move those, those uh, funds forward uh, through a process that encumbers those dollars. So um, it wouldn't be reflected in this. It's from a previous budget, and it gets moved forward. 
Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Good question, Mark. Yep. And uh, just to, to point out, we do have a meeting, um, I think, next week with that funding group just to kind of bring them up to date. Okay. Um, as we kind of work through most of the rest of um, the expenditures for community services are um, the same as, as far as uh, 101 751, the same as what they've been in previous uh, years. Um, I don't know if there's any any questions that you have on page 150 or 151. Mr. Bonzel. Oh, sorry, my mic was off. Commissioner Bonzel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, so I just, uh, I, I noticed that uh, there's a pretty significant, um, we're carrying over $600,000 in capital outlay um, under 101751972. Um, so if you could just comment on that. And I suppose, in addition, um, I was just curious, uh, this is perhaps more of a strategic planning question, but given that we haven't had a strategic planning process this year, um, that's sort of indefinitely postponed. Um, I was hoping you could just perhaps give us some updates on some capital projects that you uh, are hoping to work on in the near future. Um, perhaps the uh, dog park, which I think several people on the commission support as well as uh, so the idea of a year-round dog park, as well as getting a new soccer field and a new band shell, which are both uh, recommended in the Parks and Rec Master Plan. Yeah, okay, so um, the capital outlay there, that $600,000 is what Madison uh, playground costs. Um, so uh, in the capital outlay, we put the entire expense, and then on the top, you saw the revenue of $300,000 from the trust fund grants and $300,000 from uh, the donors. And so um, that's that's what that was. And as we were unsuccessful with the grant, we just moved that forward into this um, into this budget. Uh, as far as the other capital uh, improvements, um, dog park is something that the Parks and Rec Advisory Board is going to need to talk a little bit more about. And we, if we had um, you know a motion to move forward with that in um, this next year, then you'd probably see it next time this. Um, Season, you know, when we when we get into the capital improvement portion of the budget, which preceded these hearings, um, and as far as other expenditures, um, we do have. I think we we put the um, tourist park access road um, out into next year. Uh, we were hoping to apply for a land water conservation grant for that, but the state kind of changed the ground rules groundwork. Um, on that, so what you do when you apply for one of those now is you have to have the state historic preservation um, paperwork filed and your response back prior to uh, filing that. And this year with COVID, um, that office is pretty much non-responsive. So um, there's no way we could have put a land water conservation grant forward. So we simply moved forward with the trust fund grant. Um, but that would allow us that grant that land water conservation grant would allow us to put the road in and then the next set probably um, I think we had it in 2023 was looking at a pavilion at, at tourist park um, near the beach um, so that's kind of how all that that works out thank you I gotta build the road and the, and the utilities before you uh, put the building in no that makes sense thanks John yeah, no problem. And the other building you might not have heard was the, the I think he was referring to the band shell at Presque Isle. Is that going to be here or in cultural? Oh, is he, I'm sorry, that was kind of a little muffled. You mentioned the pavilion at Presque Isle? The band shell. Or city the band. band shell at yeah. Presque Isle. Yeah, I think um, I'd have to look at the capital. Um, improvements to see, I think that's next year. You'll see that. Um, I can respond back with the year that we had that in the CIP. Thank you. If I could, just a point of clarification that these capital projects are what we go through through the capital improvement plan when you guys review that. Um, we certainly add these ideas to the 
capital improvement list and depending on where they fall in a priority uh, financially is where they, whether or not they get funded. And I think if, uh, you know, things like the band shell or the dog park rise to the top in the eyes of the commission, that's when the commission needs to address that during our capital improvement process. Um, but if you leave it up to us, which is normally how we do that, it, it stays on the plan, but the other projects get graded or uh, considered higher and, and funded first. So that's usually why those things don't don't show up. But I would suggest for next year, if that's a high priority for you folks, that you bring that out during our capital improvement uh, process. Of course, we can always add it this year too, but that's the capital improvement part has already been somewhat resolved. Any other questions on 150 or 151? Can I, good, one, can I add one more thing? Um, John, can you, I don't know if it's in this budget, but can you touch on the, the lighthouse uh, situation? And uh, I don't know if you plan on talking about the piling project or not either, but both of those I think would be of interest. The lighthouse. Yeah, the, the are, lighthouse you, are you talking um, about lighthouse? lighthouse has Just a second, John. John. You, John. Um, John. 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 One talking at once. That. John, go ahead and stop talking for a minute. Gary's trying to talk over you. It's not going. Are well. you talking about the lighthouse part? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll get to Thank that um, a little bit later. That's a separate fund. If we could just talk about it then. And uh, I don't know of a good spot to talk about the Nada Marina project, so you could address that now, but. For the lighthouse park let's just address that when we get to page 166. i didn't know it had its own page and i just want to add to what you said uh mike about the capital improvement while we did go through the tour we have not voted on that yet correct so i, I don't know that it's somewhat resolved but if no, we go with well, the budget I, as presented it would be yeah but i'm saying it's resolved as far as planning but if you were to add some other projects too and some other things would have to drop off yep agreed and i don't know that that would happen but i just wanted to be clear yeah. that we haven't voted on that right yet. correct okay so where are we <laughs> so john if you could address the not a marina project Thanks. so um not a marina is that well, that was the question yes please thanks john okay let's call it yeah right so um not a marina is something else that we're waiting for another government entity on. Um, currently, um, Gene Battle with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers is um, working through uh, the SHPO designation. So there's a review process to make sure that uh, we're not paving over something historic or um, doing something historic. And so they're, they're going through that process. Uh, the Eagle, um, so the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy uh, has already approved their part of the process and their permit. And uh, the bottom lands conveyance, um, their portion of that was approved. Um, so we're waiting on the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, every day that goes by at this point, it's looking less and less like a uh, 2020, or at least a, a fall 2020 project. We were still hoping it up until a couple of weeks ago to squeak it in yet this year, but um, it may end up being a spring you know, based on the approvals. So um, GEI has been doing a good job working with with uh, all the permitting agencies and we've been kind of keeping tabs on it and trying to push it as fast as we can. Hey, John, uh, Commissioner Schlegel just sent me a message that he'd like to ask a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Schlegel. Paul, are you there? Yep, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Can you hear you now? Thank you. Um, John, just a quick question on, on this. Since we're not reusing the spoils from the marina, do we or should we expect a, a significant increase in the project cost because of uh, uh, this taking as long as it has? 
Um, so that was something we hoped to do, um, to combine those two. Um, in hindsight, I think that it was fairly optimistic of us um, as a local unit of government to hope that um, a process that takes both state and federal uh, permitting could move as fast as one that does not. Um, so uh, I think that that the timing was unfortunate, um, but the numbers that GEI has been putting out are similar to what they had previously. And again, we have uh, redesigned that three times uh, to meet the requirements of the permitting agencies. And the uh, current design is quite a bit different than the original, um, and but they've been able to work in some alterations that, that keep the cost um, near what we talked about last time. So. If I could add just one thing. Thank you. Um, thanks, Paul. But uh, the Nauta Marina, that's our pet name. Uh, it's an internal pet name for the piling project. So just so the public's aware that there is such a thing. It's just what we call it. Thank you. Good. Any other questions about uh, 150 or 151? I don't see any, John. Go ahead. Yeah, page 152. Okay. Thank you. So now we're moving on to 152. So this is uh, Cultural Events or Arts and Culture Division. Um, and it exists to support, facilitate, and grow and empower virtual or vital arts and culture uh, and creative community. I think I have, I'm hoping I have Tina on the line. Let me see here. I'm getting a test. I'm here. Okay, great. Um, so the text I got was um, from Andrew. Andrew says the band shell that we was mentioned earlier um, is in the CIP for 2023. So just to put that back out there. Um, arts and culture, uh, page 152. This is the fact sheet for arts and culture. Um, you'll see the wages are very similar to this year. Um, and if you look down through um, the uh, metrics there, um, I think the, the notes at the bottom kind of explain everything. There's been some changes or some reductions in, in, uh, in uh, revenues due to COVID-19. Um, a lot of the things such as Art Week and some of the exhibits just couldn't happen uh, during that time. Um, so you'll see that reflected in the, in the numbers. And then um, the uh, grant awards from MCACA uh, were a little less than we were hoping for um, this year. And I think that was due to their reduced funding. So any questions on the fact sheet for Arts and Culture 152? Any questions on these two pages, commissioners? Go ahead, John. Thank you. Okay, uh, 153 is the fee schedule for arts and culture, and that is unchanged from what we had for the last um, several years. Any questions on that? Nope, go ahead. Thank okay. you. Uh, page 154, this is the um, arts and culture budget, and um, I guess the first thing that I point out, um, while the MCACA uh, grants were um, a bit reduced, and we expect that to be the case in the next year, uh, the next line item, uh, ironically, is titled mini grants, but it's the bigger of all of them. Um, this is where we have uh, put what we hope to receive for uh, the Our Town uh, grant. So Tina is working on submitting that currently, and, and this is the grant that we've talked about for the Cultural Trail. If successful, um, it could be more than 90,000, but we anticipate that uh, our ask is, I think, 140, uh, but we anticipate that they fund, they historically have funded less than what you asked for. Um, so uh, we've, we've put $90,000 in the hopes that that 
that grant would be successful. And that's that's for that project that everybody's pretty excited about um, to interpret the cultural and natural resources along our waterfront. Which, um, Fred, that'll that'll help to uh, interpret that giant ore dock that you always get all the questions about. So, um, as well as countless other things, I think it's a, a wonderful project. So, that's the first thing I wanted to point out, um, and I think that as we look down through the rest of page 154 and into uh, 155, I guess what I would say is that we've worked pretty hard to reduce our expenses um, and um, we're constantly seeking uh, outside funding. So we've, we've put forth a budget that is, um, you know, less than what we had last year. Um, of note, if you look at the bottom, um, we do have 801 has some funds for the community calendar, which has been fairly um, imperative uh, throughout this time of COVID. That's where a lot of folks have gone to get uh, live streaming of cultural things that are going on within our community. Um, and uh, the other thing I guess that I would point out is that um, the Peter White Public Library, uh, we redid the lease with them. So that's now a fixed um, $2,500 a month. And in the past, that's been a, a uh, revolving calculation that is centered around the library's expenses. And so it's been a nightmare for us to budget for and for more so for the public, PY Public Library to budget for. So um, going into the new lease agreement, we uh, made that a fixed amount, which is slightly less than what it was before. So you'll see that rental at 30000 instead of 35000 So um, I think it worked out well for, for everyone. I'm going to open it up for questions on arts and culture. I don't see any, John. Okay. Um, moving on, the next page, 156, is um, public art. So um, several years back, I think this is the fourth budget we've done with this. Um, it was the uh, Market Park uh, Public Art Commission was formed. And um, with it came a dedicated public art fund. So um, there's a calculation that Gary does. It's based off of, I think it started off near 30,000, but there's a, a percentage of, um, of taxes that, that the formula that increases it based on inflation and a few other things. So um, the idea here is to really emphasize the, um, the public art that we have and uh, the, the public art that, that is to come in the future. Uh, so I think the fund balance is sitting um, at uh, 90,000, I think, and with this would be adding and then using some. So on page 157, uh, what you're looking at there, um, we have a use of fund balance of about $40,000. And so um, that is, um, looking at, so um, those funds would be to um, a couple of different things. Um, they'd be, if you look down below, you have professional contractual of 26500 um, And that is, so the professional contractual would be replacing the Hurley basketball court. So that would be actually pulling up the basketball court there and putting down new asphalt. And then under the project cost, um, that is um, a few things rolled into one. One would be um, the art for um, installing a mural on the new uh, surface at that uh, playground. And then um, the larger portion would be an installation of uh, a major um, art piece along the cultural trail as part of that uh, Our Town grant. Um, and so they're looking to, they understand that they're starting to accrue a balance in there. They understand that they want to, um, but there's a, there's a pressure to, to do something with it and to 
um, make it meaningful. So they've had some really lively conversations about moving forward and how to spend those dollars. So while I can't tell you exactly what that major project would be along the, the bike path, they have a lot of creative ideas. I also think the, the mural is, has been very well received um, in the conversations that we've had moving forward. So, um, I guess the only other thing of note, um, they've already presented to you recently, uh, but I would just point out that um, you know they have been working really hard up until this point to get uh, policies, procedures uh, all outlined and to uh, get the public art inventory. So an inventory of everything that we have in town, both city owned and private, um, and that inventory is now uh, complete. So that's a good news story. I'm only going to say that a couple of times. Any other questions on, any questions on public art? We just had them present recently, John, so I think we're pretty up to date. Thank you. Perfect. Um, moving on to page 158. Um, so this is in-home services. So this is the UPCAP contract for the Senior Center. Um, we have found this to be, I guess you don't, you don't know what you have until you lose it. And in a, in a way, we were without this when the pandemic started. Um, not not fully, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they did a lot of wellness calls on all of these seniors. Um, but as we opened this back up in June, uh, it's been readily apparent that the, this is a huge uh, benefit to the seniors, allowing them to stay in their homes as long as possible. Um, so um, they've been very excited to get us back in there, uh, you'll see the uh, the numbers here as far as authorized positions. Of note, um, we did work out a little bit of a wage increase for the homemakers um, for this budget season, and that was to try and combat um, some goofy things that are going on within the community, um, namely that we had homemakers that were being paid about the same as what um, you could go and work at uh, Myers as, as a cashier to do. And so the competition to get good people that really care was uh, was getting very, very tough. So we made that decision to kind of lean through that a little bit. Uh, also of note, the contract has been steadily increasing. Um, as we get into the next page, you'll see that it's, uh, or the next couple pages, you'll see that we, we budget the same amount, so we budget the 72959 for the, the contract, but historically it's been increasing. So that's, we try not to count our, our chickens before they hatch, but um, that's how we do that. Any questions on 158? Looking around, John, I'm, okay, not, I'm not seeing anyone. Go ahead. Yep. Sounds good. 159. Um, so this is, um, we kind of bounced around a little bit. So this is the um, local millage and allocation. Um, so there is some homemaking in this uh, process. So if you're on, if you're one of our homemaking clients, um, you, the dollars come from both both places. Um, but this is this is the, the county dollars that, that come in, um, as well as the local millage that just passed. Um, with the last election at 92% um, approval, I might add. So that was that was huge, and um, big kudos to the staff that really worked to make sure the public was educated as far as what that note should be going towards. So you see the wages uh, very similar, with the exception of homemakers. Um, as you get down to the bottom, you may have questions on how all of that works as far as clients and units. Um, a unit is a 15 minute time period. And so um, a client is a person. And so you can have um, some of those things such as the bottom homemaking, you know, bounce around quite a bit depending on how much time we have, we spend with one or the other, um, or if uh, someone is added or drops off the list uh, for services. So um, there, if you, if you try and read too hard into those stats, it'll, it'll melt your brain, but um, 
the the reality is we track that very closely and we report with the county and those we've gone over them even again today just to make sure that they're all accurate and they are and, and so i guess that's all i'd say about that unless you have questions directly not seeing any questions john thank you okay uh, page 160, um, so this is um, the revenue. So you have the, um, it starts off with the revenue. So the first top section is um, what we see from local property taxes and other sources. Um, I would say that, um, you know, there's been a small reduction in property taxes, which you've already heard about, and that does extrapolate down into this. Um, I think that uh, the that portion of it is, is pretty healthy. And then I think I, I mentioned um, we do budget the same amounts for the contracts. You'll see the same numbers or similar numbers. Um, uh, down below on uh, 290, 687, 586, um, that is the county. Uh, uh, Market Aging Services um, contract, and that was increased from last year to this year. So, um, 391 is the, the contract amount we're working with now and this year. It gets increased in the middle of the year. So, that's the number we use for that. As you get into wages, um, at the bottom of the page there, um, or as you get into the expenses, I'm sorry, uh, you see. This is going to be um, the in-home portion. And at the bottom, let's see, at the middle of the next page of 161, it's kind of the bottom line. Uh, so about $90,000 in expenditures for the uh, in-home. Um, all the things budgeted for in that portion are um, as uh, very similar to what we had in the last year. Um, when we get into the portion of 687 at the bottom of page uh, 161, um, I guess I would point out uh, a couple of things, the printing and publishing. Um, I guess there's, there's nothing to mention as far as the numbers, but I'd just like to thank the staff um, for delving into that. That's primarily uh, the Horizons newsletter. And so we did a lot of homework this year to um, find out if people were indeed needing one of those printed and sent to them. Um, and we've redu reduced the, the mailing costs and the printing costs by printing less of them. And a lot of people are going virtual with that. So um, we're able to send that out electronically. And um, we've also improved it quite a bit, adding the um, the events calendar to and a few other things that the, the seniors are really excited about. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Um, the other piece that you might have questions about, uh, you see that line uh, 812 is new. Um, so that's the technology service. That used to be um, combined with 943, which is facilities, operations, and maintenance. So you'll see those numbers were just pulled out and split. So, um, so what's, what's left there with the $6,890, yeah, that is uh, what goes to facilities uh, in DPW to maintain the space. Um, so we pulled that out and, and better delineated that this year. Any questions about uh, 161 for senior services? I'm not seeing any, John. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, page 162, Tourist Park. Um, so going into this with the uh, pandemic, we were a little anxious, and some of the numbers you saw with lost revenue um, were, I had, Tourist Park at about half uh, the revenue that we normally have. Um, the reality is, and you, you see it down there, camping revenue at about 200,000. 
Um, as of today, we're well over um, 310,000 for the year. So uh, people are camping and the park has been busy and we've gotten a lot of good feedback um, with the precautions that we have in place out there. Despite some of the things that you hear coming out of it, um, we do have kids working for us and um, we have had uh, a case that came out of our employees that we've never had transmission within the park. So um, that's a that's a good thing. And um, and it's while it's I've heard other people say it, it's it's kind of bittersweet that we that uh, you know so many people are there. Uh, it helps the revenue out. It's also um, a lot of anxiety surrounding a lot of people in space, but uh, I think that we're we're knocking it out of the park and we're doing a good job of uh, following protocol. So multiple, multiple emails and kudos to the staff uh, for doing what they need to be doing out there. Um, so yeah, on 162, that revenue number of 200,000 could be a lot larger. Um, 163, um, I want to point out that we are looking at raising our fees next year. So um, $35 for electric, $40 for full hookup, and $20 for tent sites. Um, that's very reasonable. Um, even Ripley and River in town is a little bit more than that. And if you look uh, across the board, we, we we're right in the middle of where, where we need to be. And we felt with the new facilities that was warranted. And I don't think anybody's going to balk at it. Um, the last fee that was added is actually a courtesy to the campers, that early check-in fee. So if you check into a hotel, a lot of times you call ahead and you can um, ask if you can get an early check-in. Sometimes they have a fee, sometimes they don't. Uh, but the idea is if they can make it available, uh, they will. And it'd be the same thing here. So if you arrived in town at noon and check-in is, is 3 p.m., um, if uh, if, it, if the site's already mowed and we don't have to do anything for it and, and everybody's vacated that site, the previous um, renters, then we'll get you in there for a fee of $10 and, um, and just make your, your stay that much more convenient. So uh, I think that that's a, a good addition. Any questions on 162 or 163? John, I have uh, one question. Um, how many camping days then do you expect or have you even thought about that that's okay if you haven't um i noticed normally we've had 149 camping days yeah so um we had 149 in 2019 and um the 2020 season i think we're spot on unless we have any sort of issues with that 124. okay thank you so it's reduced, uh, but it was reduced on the, the spring bookend, which we don't see a lot of revenue during that time anymore. Um, so that's how the, the revenue has stayed so positive, despite the, the late start. Okay, I'm, I'm running the meeting. The mayor stepped away, but I think I don't see any questions. Is that where we are on? Uh... On Tourist Park, are we ready to move on? Okay. Okay. Um, are you? Oh, you are on expenses. Sorry, yeah. revenue and expenses. Yeah. Yeah. So page one sixty four, as far as the revenue and expenses. Um, so we are uh, anticipating uh, that the revenue will increase with those increased fees, and that's represented in that second line of revenue, um, three hundred sixty eight thousand, um, and then. The rest of those are ancillary fees for things like firewood, ice, and, um, and other things of that nature. So um, that would increase our revenue and push us over the, we, we anticipate being over the 400,000 mark uh, for the first time ever in revenues, barring um, any major issue with the pandemic. Um, so that um, is the revenue side of it, the expenditures, um we i guess the things that i'd like to point out um with this is the bottom line we're we're putting 126 thousand dollars into um the reserves everything above it is very similar to what we've had 
in previous years and it's taking care of business. So it's replacing piston staples and fire rings and um, doing what we need to do to maintain it. Uh, bottom line is we're putting money in the, in the uh, reserve account. So um, I think that that kind of speaks for itself. There's some notes on what each line item has uh, incorporated into it. Um, the only other thing I'd point out is the, the TELP lease payment, and we'll get into this with some of the um, the other uh, budgets a little bit further down. Um, that was something that we, so that is the Johnson Control Project. Mm. Uh, we had a TELP lease payment last year, but we also had a TELP savings line that um, erased it. The idea is that hopefully the budgets now reflect um, the savings uh, that are representative of the cost of that. Um, not always the case, as we'll see with some of the other budgets, um, but that's on there and something else, which is different from last year. Any other questions about tourist park in general? Yeah, and speaking of that, I see that the water per is actually anticipated to go up. Um, is that because of our increase in fees? Do you, or uh, the purchased water? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so that would be the case. Um, you know, power is uh, probably the same. Um, every year the power goes up whether the rates do or not as campers get bigger air conditioners and things like that, but the rates are even going down a little bit. So um, the power we anticipate to stay the same for the first time in a while. So. Any other questions about tourist park? Nope, no questions. Okay. Uh, moving on to Lighthouse Park. Um, so this is its own fund. Um, the city manager wanted to talk about it in the uh, administration side of things. Uh, but because it um, has revenue sources, um, that it gets its own fund. Uh, so that's why the place marker is there for the fact sheet on page 166. And 167, we get into the budget itself. Um, to answer uh, Mike's question on um, the uh, what we have going on out there, we have some bond dollars that are left over. Um, so within this uh, budget year that we're in currently, um, we anticipate uh, doing a couple of things. Uh, DPW is working on replacing the boiler at the captain's house. Um, and getting, doing a couple other repairs to get that ready at, to use as a short-term rental. Um, and uh, we're also looking at uh, replacing the basketball hoop out there on that court um, and um, also uh, getting Lighthouse Park its own sign. So those are the things that we're working out and we'll either have um, done this year or encumber from this year. Uh, for this next uh, budget, kind of looking into things, a lot of the, um, the expenses you see there are operating supplies for um, the short-term rental. Um, I had hoped to have, you know, Mike and I had discussed having that running this summer, but um, I hate to keep talking about the fact that we're in a pandemic, but uh, it really has sort of, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable putting an RFP on the street for a hotelier to uh, submit a proposal to help us run this. So the idea is to have a hotelier uh, run it and provide some level of revenue back to the city. Uh, and with their struggles right now, we're just not going to put that out until uh, until they're in a better place. So. Um, we're, we're working on preparing for that. Um, and again, the captain's house is our first line of uh, revenue. We obviously have some repairs and things that we need to do the lighthouse and those are um, are in the works. Um, operating supplies and all that stuff, it's all for um, the captain's house. That'll be our first revenue source that comes on beyond um, the current one. Uh, and our current revenue source is uh, that top line item, $8,000 uh, for half of the proceeds from tours from the Market Marathon Museum. So um, that's the contract that we have with them. 
they I've spoken with them. They're in the same boat as we are with Tourist Park. Happy to see people coming out. A little nervous that so many people are coming out, but it looks like um, their revenues are going to be a lot better than they expected. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, moving forward, next stages of the of Lighthouse Park would be after the captain's house is up and running. We're going to continue to work on the chip away at the list of things needed at the Lighthouse um, and seek some grant opportunities for that. Um, but the next big one would be to do a full phase planning initiative to determine what the old station house is going to be and how we can utilize that and gain revenue from it. So um, that building is, we've had a couple work sessions out there. Not at, not everybody on the commission now was, was in those work sessions, but as you, you may well know, that building is uh, chopped up and it's going to be interesting to see how we um, repurpose it to, to serve the community. So, um, any questions on Lighthouse Park? I see no questions. Okay. Um, Prescott and Marina, um, as we look at this, uh, the fact sheet, um, we just completed a project out there. So we have um, 38 slips uh, out at the marina. Um, you'll see the, the wages. Um, we've kind of reduced the, the attendance from what they have been in the past. Um, although we stationed, with the pandemic, we stationed a person out there this year. It's not our intent to have someone there at all times. Uh, we do have radios and cell phones so we can uh, run up to that marina from the other marina fairly efficiently um, if we have a boat coming in that would like help. Um, and we do no longer have fuel at that site. So uh, the fuel sales were negligible in the past. Uh, Especially compared to Sindapon. So the you'll see the discrepancy in the wages there. Um, and down at the bottom you can kind of see um, we're anticipating um, reduction in some of the launches, although that may uh, turn out to be not the case. It seemed like everybody wanted to go fishing when the pandemic hit, so um, we'll see what those numbers actually come in at. Uh, currently we have um, 28 slips are occupied at uh, Press Dial and Open. Um, and we've had, um, over the course of the last year, uh, just a few transit rentals. Um, the next page it pertains to uh, Press Dial Marina, and this is just the uh, waterways approved um, transient rates. So, that's per slip size. That's in the budget every year. Um, the page after that is actually a cinder pond um, transient slip rates, and those are a different class, so they're slightly higher. Um, but uh, just to the services, but those are also uh, driven by waterways. Any questions on? Those transient fees or the fact sheet? No questions. Okay. Uh, page 171 is the marina fees themselves. Um, and that indicates the commission policy adopted, uh, I believe, three years ago now um, with a 5% increase. So as we move um, forward, and there may come a time when when, when this is no longer feasible, but at the current time we think it is, um, these are the these are the rates uh, with five percent added. Um, everything else within the fee structure is unchanged. Any questions on Maria fees? No questions. Okay. I have a general question, if I can, John. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. Um, what do you? What kind of feedback are you getting with the new uh, setup of the marina down there with this season? Oh yeah, the everybody loves it as far as I think it's a an amazing uh, dock system and just a 
I guess, you know, when, when you've got a, a uh, facility that was as old as the old one was, and um, you've got docks leaning um, at pretty drastic angles and you're kind of you know, shutting them down as they get worse, uh, people get really excited when you, when you put something brand new in there. So it's been it's been good. Um, we've, I think that the, we'll talk a little bit on the next page, but I think that as you look at, um, we changed the slip sizes, so we do have 10 open slips, and those are the larger ones. Um, I just think it's going to take a couple of years to get to that point. Even this year, uh, to the point where we we're filling those, even this year we've had, um, you know, throughout the season, more and more people filling them. So we started off with a lot less than 28, um, and we just sold a, a, uh, a half-season uh, slip today. So. Um, that would actually increase the numbers that we would be would be putting out there. So, um, good feedback, and I think over time, uh, I think we did the right side to us. So, time will tell on that. Thank you. Yep. Um, page 172 is the, um, the revenues and expenditures for uh, Presque Isle. And I guess the next next three budgets, I had a, a few uh, heart palpitations over today as I was kind of looking over a few different things. And so Gary and I talked a few times about a couple of things, and we had to do a little research. Um, the first one is we have in there, we're going to edit this. Uh, we have in there $40,000 for rent, um, line six, six, seven. Um, that will be closer to 60,000 and the year end right before the 28,000 uh, will be 55,000. So um, that has to do with um, how quickly those those have filled up. Uh, so we'll add another $20,000 in revenue to this. Um, as far as, um, so right now the, that last line in revenues, other, uh, 695 is funds that would have to come from Marina Reserve or General Fund, depending on how we end up working that. But again, that would be $20,000 less right off the bat because of $60,000 in that. Um, and I'll explain a couple other things down in the expenses um, that contribute to that. Most of our expenses are um, the same or less, but I would point out that um, purchase power is going to be more. We we're hoping we wouldn't have to run bubblers, um, and there may still come a time uh, where we can tweak the design up there to decouple that and not run bubblers, but for this next year, we're going to expend more power dollars to run those bubblers, so 9,000 versus 6,500. Um, in purchase power. And then in the on the following page 173, um, so this gets into um, the some of the, the accounting sides of things. Uh, there is a line item for uh, the TELP lease payment, so that's an additional 13500 that last year would have been offset. Um, with the health savings line, um, and there is um, the full depreciation is counted in the, the bottom line this year, which in the past, um, and this is going to hold true for um, for Prescott, Cinder Pond, and Lakeview. Um, in the past, the um, excuse me for Prescott and Cinder Pond. In the past, the depreciation has been backed out, um, but. The bottom line is is the same. So I guess what I would say um, for this whole thing, if you want to compare apples to apples, 2020 to 2021, um, what you need to look at is um, when we add that $20,000 additional revenue, um, you have the $75,000 in the tel and then the depreciation and the tel payment of $13,540. Um, we're looking at uh, Reserve needed uh, $32,000 um, 
not quite the 140 some thousand dollars that that's shown here, but if you're showing apples to apples. And I think that um, as those 10 larger slips fill up, um, we're going to see that gap close and uh, and then start to contribute to to reserves. But um, Gary can maybe explain the the depreciation and the two different ways uh, that we look at it uh, or that we can look at it. In the bottom line, with that that piece of it, it's not any different than what we did last year with the depreciation, but it shows on my bottom line as it is. <laughs> so, I don't know, if you want to mention that or if the commissioners have any questions about that. So, uh, just to make this as brief as I can, because you'll see this particularly on our next session on the utility funds, but we're trying to get the budget to more accurate, accurately reflect what we see when we produce the CAFR, which is really the audited financial statements. Budgetarily, we were always backing out depreciation, but you don't do that in the CAFR at the end of the year. But you do back out uh, other items like your bond payment principles and your capital outlay. So for this budget, we started to um, uh, more accurately reflect what you see at the end of the year. So in the Presque Isle Marina, it really wasn't that big of an impact. Uh, instead of backing out 75,000 in depreciation, we're backing out 70,000 in bond principal. But you will see a bigger impact when we're looking at the utilities. And really the reason for doing that, uh, the way it was presented in the budget, when you compare what we're doing in the budget versus what we're doing in the audited financial statements, that part was a little hard to reconcile. And uh, so what we're doing now should more accurately reflect what we're doing in the audited financial statements. Um, the way we were doing the budget, it was really you know, a easier way to look at it was on a cash basis, which works for your general and other governmental funds, but it doesn't work for your enterprise funds. So really, it's just a bean counter thing, trying to uh, paint a little bit more accurate picture of what's going on when you see your audited financial statements. Could I ask a question sure. then, uh, um, maybe simplify it even more? Uh, are we saving money at Presque Isle Marina thanks to JCI? Yeah, so um, what they've done up at the marina, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's saving that. So, so with the JCI project, and, and Gary can you know, speak to this a little bit too, but. Um, you know, the, the idea is that the whole project saves the city money. Um, now, unfortunately, when we get into, um, I mean, it, it affects Tourist Park as well, although that Tourist Park has always been a strong budget. Uh, but when we get into the savings on any given site and therefore on any given budget, um, they're not necessarily reflected in the, what was spent on the project within that budget. Um, so I think the majority of the savings, um, if they come to fruition, are at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, wow. So in, in, as a whole, the city is going to save um, a lot of money uh, doing that project. Um, but when we get to my budget, <laughs> it, it doesn't necessarily uh, equate to a dollar spent or a dollar saved. Did you want to add something, Mike, or were you? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's that's clear and simple. So thank you. That um, I, I heard that we're uh, going to see a huge savings at the wastewater treatment plant, and then um, other places were getting efficiencies, but it might not be a dollar to dollar efficiency. All right. Yep. Yes, that's a good way to look at it, and. Uh, we can talk about more about it with Eric on Wednesday if you desire, but that's 
really kind of been the bean counter nightmare is how do you show savings in each fund when actually maybe savings aren't there to cover the full TELP payment. So particularly in John's area, um, in Lucky John, you're going to see that in a few areas where the TELP payment is actually exceeding the savings that they're projecting. But when you look at the project overall, there will be significant savings. It's just that you can't look at a particular fund and maybe those savings aren't there in that fund. But when you add it all up, it's, it's there. Thank you. That's, that, I think that serves my purpose. Um, go ahead, John. All right, any other questions on Prescott Moon? Nope. Okay. Uh, moving on to 174, and this is Cinder Pond Marina. Um, right off the bat, um, another one of those wage discrepancies for the part-time employees. Um, what we have in 2021 is uh, accurate for the number of hours we have them with, we schedule them. So um, that's a first question you might have. Um, rentals uh, down there are holding strong. We are full. Um, they actually have a, a couple of openings, uh, but we do have a waiting list of 10. And that gets down to the right sizing of slips. Um, so right now there's 10 people on a waiting list, but there's none of those slips available. Slip sizes available. So um, that's, uh, I think the, the rentals are in pretty good shape. The other thing I'd point out about, um, about Cinder Pond, and um, again, when we put this, this together, um, this was estimates, so we had an estimate of seventy thousand dollars in fuel, um, which is a you know a huge amount of fuel. Um, we're going to be well above that. So uh, I've been approving POs for fuel like crazy this year, um, and so uh, we'll see significantly more sales. And again, we get uh, fifty cents on the gallon for those. Um, so it is that is a good thing. Um, and then um, the mooring field um, has been um, doing fairly well. We've had a couple of issues with the mooring field this last year with some shackles and um, some things like that. So we've put some dollars in to re replace some of that hardware. Uh, it is getting getting uh, dated. It was uh, that was an initiative uh, spearheaded by Police Chief Angeli. So it's a while ago. <laughs> um, on the next page for Center Pond, page 175, um, the the revenues on this side of things, um, I think uh, if I look at all the revenues overall, they've increased because of the fee increases. Um, and, but then you have a line item here that's showing um, the $38,000 from some fund balance, um, from the $39,000. So that's not the greatest thing to have in there, but I'll explain it as we get into the expenses. Um, all of our expenses, I don't have anything in here that is um, significantly more than um, than what was budgeted for in the previous budget. And the previous budget on page 176, we were showing um, $51,000 going into fund balance. So in this case, um, there is no capital improvement uh, for Gary to back out. And it is purely taking out uh, the $94,000 on the bottom line with the, with the depreciation like we talked about. So if you put that back in, we're we would have been putting fifty and you know, like fifty-five thousand dollars in the fund balance. So um, it's a better budget than last year, um, although it doesn't look better. Any questions on Cindy Pond? I'm not seeing any, John. Fred, no. yeah, I got one. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry, yep. Fred. Yep. Go ahead, Mr. Stonehouse. John, question, and maybe Gary too. Are we making money with Cinder Pond? 
In other words, are we actually able to put money against the fund balance or are we again doing transfers in? Yeah, so um, with the previous way of accounting, and I was just kind of alluding to this. Um, so if you look at 2020, uh, we were budgeted to put $51,000 into uh, Marina Reserve. And this year, based on um, counting that depreciation towards the bottom line, we're uh, looking at using $38,000 of fund balance. So uh, we're expending less, we're bringing in more, but the bottom line um, is a difference of $38,000, well, $80,000 uh, because of that $94,000 depreciation. So this is a budget that doesn't have a capital improvement and so there's no way to back that capital improvement out um, to try and make it whole. Um, but I think without looking at that huge chunk of depreciation, we're making about $55,000 a year with it. So um, what that equates to in the fund reserve, I think I'd have to defer to Gary, but I, I would say that until we can overcome that change, um, and I, I would anticipate that being next year, um, I would hope that next year we could be putting money back into the fund reserve. But we, um, we built so that it's, marina. It's a different ball game. I think we built that marina in 1995 and we're still paying on the capital? Uh, to uh, answer I your... I don't think we have a bond payment. I mean, I'm trying to think of any capital investment we've made in the last 25 years of any substance. I can't think of anything. Yeah, to answer your original question, um, what John is trying to describe, it's really just a bean counter thing. And that 51,000, and that's why I made the change, it's really deceptive because we really weren't you know because it all flows into how the fin the audited financial statements are reported so that's why i made the change to show that but to answer your question we aren't having to take money out of the general fund to fund the marinas anymore they all are uh, self-supporting and they should continue to be going into the future so we shouldn't have to be using general fund money to uh, fund the marinas one of the the reasons I'm asking the question is because I think for the last seven years, five years, John, we've had some pretty steep uh, annual increases of slip rentals. And the rationale for that was so that we could get the marinas to a position of beginning to put money away for rebuilding, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, now that seems not to be true, at least from the accounting. And that's a public perception that is not going to go down well if no matter what happens, the books show that we're not making money when we are in reality making money. That makes sense? Yeah, and again, it, it's just um, trying to get the budget to match what the CAFR says. And that 39000 or whatever, 38000 it's just a balancing item. So is, and usually what happens, revenues come in, you know, a little bit higher because we do try to budget conservatively on the revenues and on the expenses. If they come in lower, then that's what's going to allow, you know, for the reserve funds to be built up. So we still are adding to reserves. Um, it's just not at the rate that we were showing in the budgets. And so that's what I was getting concerned about. And so that's why we made the change and uh, we did that for all enterprise funds. Can we fix that so we don't have to do that anymore? To fix what now? So that we have an actual honest budget that looks at us of what we make and what we don't make. Well, that's what this attempt is. It's about as close as we're going to be able to get that um, we're allowed to do at this point. Thank you. Other questions or comments in this section? I think we're moving on to Lakeview Arena. All right, uh, page 177. Thanks, Gary, for explaining that. Um, so this is the fact sheet for Lakeview Arena. Um, as you see, um, the wages are, are similar um, to what we ha have had in the past. 
Um, Lakeview has been um, substantially affected by the pandemic, uh, and the majority of that, um, while we did have lost revenue in ICE uh, because we shut down earlier for the stay home, stay safe order, um, we did not have any dry floor events. This building has been closed to the public. Uh, so um, all of our dry floor revenue uh, has, has not materialized uh, for this fiscal year, and that would have been, you know, over this summer. So um, the, the rent and, and whatnot in 2020 uh, has maintained consistent, um, but we will be looking at, um, you know, some issues surrounding the pandemic. Um, on page uh, 178, this is the fees, and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of the of the budget. Um, the fees here, we have increased um, some of the open skate uh, fees. So we've increased the, the public skating by a dollar. It's, it's a minimal increase. We haven't done anything with those uh, fees in quite a while. Um, so we felt that, that it was responsible to kind of move those up a little bit. We've left the um, the ice rental fee at two hundred dollars an hour for residents and two sixty for non residents now um, what I would say about that is that um, I'd like to start having conversations about lakeview ice fees. Did you drop off, John? Did we lose you? Has it been two hours? <laughs> Hang on, John. You're speaking to yourself. He's still talking. Yeah. You left off right around the icing fees. That's where we left off. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your... Enter your partic- You are in the meeting now. There are nine participants in the meeting. You have been put on hold by the host. You cannot listen or talk until the host releases the hold. Thank you, Sean. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, John, we've got uh, the Go mission. ahead. You left off right okay. around, um, you said something about the icing fees, the ice fees. Yeah, you were okay. going to yeah. say you were going to so double the ice fees. The ice fees are $200 uh, an hour in this fee schedule and uh, that's the same as last year but I want to move uh, the conversation around those fees to a mid-year conversation similar to how we do with uh, marina rates. Reason being um, if we changed that I'm getting feedback you guys hear me okay? We can hear you just fine we're not hearing any feedback. Okay, good. Um, if we change those fees right now, then everyone that budgets, so Marquette Junior Hockey, the SIGs, and everyone else, um, would not have a valid budget any longer. So um, we need to set those fees if we're going to raise any of them um, mid-year and have a conversation at the commission level um, about that. So we may be coming forward um, in the future. I'm more and more hesitant to do that with um, with the pandemic the way it's shaped, shaped out this year, but um, in the future years, any, any increases in ICE uh, hourly fees are gonna come mid-year to you. Okay. Um, the rest of the fee schedule for Lakeview is um, unchanged with one exception. Um, we added a section that was used glass on um, page 179 and that is um, as we're replacing the glass we've already replaced the Olsen glass um, we do have the old glass still and that is um, useful to people for greenhouses and for um, shooting surfaces and things like that people to practice 
uh, shooting at nuts at home on the garage driveway. Um, so um, people would be really interested in getting their hands on that. So we put a fee in there of $15 for the large ones and 10 for the small, um, just so we don't have to put it on the auction site every time. Um, we can just sell that right out of the office. Any questions on Lake UTs? Commissioners? I don't see any. Go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, page 180 is the uh, two page budget for Lakeview. Um, now, maybe right now is a good time to kind of just breach the subject of, um, you know, the start and the opening of Lakeview Arena. Um, we've had conversations, uh, you know, between the administration and the and the mayor um, regarding uh, how we open and when we open Lakeview. And the consensus has been that we um, we hold off just a bit. We're still hoping to open by October 2nd for um, the first tournament that is scheduled. Um, but however, we need to make that decision two weeks in advance just for the process. Um, and we wanted to wait at least that long to get a feel for um, how opening the schools um, will affect the case numbers in Marquette. So um, we're putting forth a uh, full-throated, full-fledged budget. Um, not There's zero interest in um, getting rid of Lakeview, as you may hear online. Um, and this budget will be available for all to see um, if they'd like to take a look at it. Um, the revenues, um, as we're looking at the revenues for Lakeview, I'm anticipating um, and hoping for similar revenues in the, in the coming year um, to what we've had in the past. Um, what you will see in here um, is um, you'll see a couple of things. You'll see. Uh, in previous years, we had um, under reimbursements uh, 676, uh, $95,000. Uh, this year it's $14,000. And what that is, the $14,000 is uh, promotional funds that come back to Lakeview. Uh, so events that get promo funds that are held in Lakeview. Um, and then the rest of that $95,000 in the previous year was hockey bill. Uh, funds that were expended uh, to do the improvements. So we have purchased new tables, we have put in a uh, new floor in the lobby, um, we have replaced the glass in the Olsen, uh, as well as um, doing all of the uh, upgrades to all the showers in the facility. Um, so we've, we've expended almost all of those dollars, and so you won't see those that revenue source, which is a good chunk. Um, you see transfers in. Um, this is what we kind of always look at, and that's the $446,000. Um, last year it was at $231,000. Um, so that is, again, I'm putting forth a budget that is um, virtually identical to last year in um, revenues and expenditures. Um, however, we do have um, $151,000 in health savings we saw um, in uh, 2020. And that was um, the way that the accounting really offsetted the health expenses for last year. So we had a, a credit of $151,000. $151, um, this year we don't have that savings um, because, again, with the JCA project, the hope is that the building um, reduces all the costs that, that the project costs. Um, so hopefully we're saving these dollars. Again, it's not going to be dollar for dollar with every facility, and it is not the case here like you. Um, but if you look at um, purchase power actually on 181, so purchase power, um, this is where you do see some savings, and this is um, this is where the, the bulk of the savings with the project within Lakeview are going to present themselves. 
Um, so we have, we were headed toward $250,000 power bills and um, we're kind of, we've got it figured out. We hope that it's going to be at $139,000. Uh, so that's a huge savings. Um, again, we didn't get a full season uh, this last year to do the analysis. So, um, but based on the month to month and and typical temperatures, we think that um, will be about that number. Um, so that is all of the savings that we would see from that project. Um, and again, last year we had $150,000 budgeted, so we're looking at about $10,000 less than the budget from last year. Um, not enough to offset the, um, the TELP payment uh, at the bottom of page uh, 181 of 157,840. So I've given you a budget that is um, about as lean as I can get and, um, and producing as much revenue as we could possibly come up with at this point. We still, I've said it every year, um, and you know, you know, obviously the pandemic is going to going to affect us, but um, I still have high hopes to, um, you know, not put the burden of this facility completely on the hockey community and the ice. Um, this facility is a fantastic facility for events. Um, we're working toward um, this last year we purchased uh, black pipe and grid instead of the uh, green and gold that we inherited from NMU. Um, that type of thing makes holding a dry floor event a lot better, uh, a lot more enticing. And so um, I think we're going to see in years to come increases in ice spots um, incrementally, but I want to offset the majority of uh, these funds and start to work toward uh, a lesser balance with um, all year round use of this facility, having this place pretty much full all the time, which is not going to happen until the pandemic has um, decided. So that's the reality that, that we have. Um, we can't pack um, the arena for a circus when this is going on. And so um, hopefully in the next coming year uh, that will be solved. Otherwise, we may see some worse numbers. <coughs> John, uh, Commissioner Schlegel had a couple questions for you. Go ahead, Commissioner Schlegel. Okay, just, just one thank you. Um, you mentioned the allocation of the monies for the showers and the number of different projects. And um, I, I guess my question is, are, are those, are all of those projects that you mentioned, have they been completed or are they still in the process? No, all everything I mentioned is done. Um, so. The floor happened was, was the, the last, um, I guess, I guess actually the one thing that's not complete right now um, is we, as part of that, we um, renovated and moved our skate shack, so where we hold the rental skates. Um, and just based on the furloughs, um, our, our carpenter hasn't had time to finish putting that in, so we haven't moved the skates over to that. That's the only piece that we have left to do of everything I mentioned. Um, what I would say um, is that um, at the year end, we'll figure out exactly what's left. We do have a, just a few funds, um, 20,000 plus left from all of that. And we'll work with um, the hockey community to determine um, of the many things this building could use, uh, what's most uh, appealing to them. And I think it's probably going to be um, some level of upgrade to the sound system. Um, if you come to a game, you know, sometimes you get a lot of feedback. Uh, if you try and come to a concert here, if we try to use these speakers, um, we do have a lot, a lot of issues with those. So um, that would be my guess as to what they would desire for the last little bit. Um, but that's all we have left. So the, the restroom, uh, the, the, I remember last year, the, one of the big issues was one of the restrooms uh, uh, whether there was a sink that was off the wall or whatever, but uh, ADA compliance, you know, thing, things like that that were really kind of the hot buttons. Um, you know, I was just curious 
Uh, are, we, are we looking like we're getting all that stuff kind of wrapped up and, and moving forward? Yeah, the, yeah, some of those things were, were really incidental. I mean, uh, the, all of that's been taken care of, all the things that, that were brought up during that um, great. time period. You know, that restroom was closed for, I think, almost a month because of parts. Uh, and that's all back up, open and okay. running. Um, Thank you. There, there are a couple of capital improvements in the future years um, that would even make this building more accessible. Um, so we'll, we'll see how those flush out with that process as we move forward. Thanks much, appreciate it. Commissioners, other questions? Any other questions? Bonzo? Yeah. Mr. Bonzel has a question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, John, could you just provide a little bit more, uh, a little clarification for me on under expenses, uh, the item capital outlay building improvements, um, on the second page there, it says that we budgeted 260,000 in, f uh, fiscal 20, only spent about 40,000 and now we're budgeting zero in fiscal 21 for capital outlay building improvements. Could I, I especially, I kind of worry that taking out that uh, funding, it makes it look, if you just look at the bottom line, that we're cutting funding for Lakeview Arena, even though we're not. So could you just clarify what that is and why that's zero now? Yeah, so um, that was the uh, Russell Dasher board. And um, what happened with that is um, we had planned to spend that um, this year and we will yet Still do that project, but the um, the the deal was with with the pandemic, we never took out the boards. Um, so we were waiting, and as events canceled, we waited, and we didn't take the boards, and we didn't take the glass out. Um, that's a huge operation, a lot of labor, a lot of expense. Um, so we didn't take them out, didn't take them out, and then the last event canceled, and we just left them in. So um, we do not have to install those this year, um, which will be um, a huge saving in labor. And we'll do it on the back end of the, of the season. So we'll, that'll be one that gets encumbered uh, and we'll move it into the next, uh, next season. So that's a good question. No, thank, thank you. I just had one other quick question because I know there's some people who seem to think that we're, we have financial motivations for delaying the ice installation. Could you just, clarify what savings, if any, the city is realizing from that? Yeah, um, so ice installation, um, you know, um, I guess here's what I would say. It's, it's a backwards conversation the way that it's put out into the community right now, but the, the realities are that first and foremost, we have to make sure that uh, that we do no harm uh, to the community by opening, um, let's say, if the numbers of cases in Marquette are skyrocketing because schools are going back. Um, the, the, we need to make sure we understand the data before we open this facility. Um, and we need to make that decision two weeks in advance to turn the compressors on. Uh, so it's all revolving around schools going back and the data that we get from the school. Uh, now, it could be said, well, why don't you just turn the compressors on now and start building ice and, uh, and not wait for that, that uh, decision to be made? Well, the reality is that if we are unable to open the facility um, on whatever given date we, our target is, and we turn the compressors on and make ice, it's about $600 a day just in power um, to run that. So um, we want to make that decision that's responsible for the community, or we want to do it and turn the compressors on two weeks before our opening day. And uh, that'll give us the right amount of time to build the ice and it'll waste the least amount of power. Um, so we're not interested in saving money by um, pushing back the ice season. We're just interested in not wasting money if the ice season can't start because of the, of the pandemic. And I, and I won't say can't start, but if there's a delay that's a uh, direct result of the data. So um, 
we're really hopeful that um, the community is responsible, does the things that uh, they need to do so that we can get kids back to school and um, and not have a surge in, in uh, cases within the county um, so that we can get this place open on October 2nd. <laughs> thanks, John. That makes perfect sense to me. Thanks, John. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yeah, thanks for that uh, clear explanation. Uh, could I don't know if you want to do this now or we have another place, but could you, um, I also want to thank you and your staff for the partnership with Room at the Inn during this pandemic. And could you speak to that and um, whenever that makes sense, but I would like to have an update on that, please. I, and again, just a huge thank you to um, the work that's gone into making that partnership work and keeping our community safe and keeping our most vulnerable people in our community safe during this time. Yeah, so um, that's a great question, and, and thanks for asking it. Um, the uh, population that that we've been serving since the pandemic started, and and this goes, you know, this goes to kind of the heart of of you know what um, local government is here for, and emergency plans for when crazy things happen, right? Um, large facilities, you, you see it in other places. You see. Um, you know, large stadiums becoming uh, places for people to go when there's hurricanes and other things like that. And Lakeview is listed as one of those those types of, of facilities that, that we have in our back pocket for when we need it. And it just so happened that, um, that it was a possibility to use that um, for this vulnerable population during stay home, stay safe. And so when the governor put those orders out, um, obviously, if you're homeless, you have no place to go. Um, we tried to work out some places. Lakeview wasn't the most optimal place. Um, we tried to find some place that would be a little warmer. When we first got those, got the stay home, stay safe orders, um, it was still pretty chilly out, and uh, temperatures never got above 47 in the, in the Olsen, despite all of our efforts to warm it up. Um, so we tried to, to look for something that would be a little bit uh, better for them, and in the end, um, this was the only place available, and we, we made it available. Um, once the stay home, stay safe orders lifted, uh, we worked with Room at the Inn, and they're back at Room at the Inn all day long. However, the churches um, were unable to um, help do the, the pandemic um, and the, the worries associated with that. So, um, since we haven't had any events, uh, we were able to allow them back in um, just during the um, evening. So they come over at 8 p.m. and then they um, leave by 7 in the morning to go back to the room at the end. So um, keeping them out of the community and keeping them um, in a place that's a little bit safer during the, the pandemic. Um, and moving forward, um, that doesn't really play too much into um, doesn't really play at all into what day we open the arena, uh, but we're going to try and work with them as much as possible um, with the idea that we're going to open when we need to open, and we need some time within that two-week period to professionally clean that space um, so that the public you know, feels comfortable uh, that all surfaces have been during the pandemic have been cleaned and uh, and uh, properly taken care of. So. We've got a little bit of work to do, um, and that's a moving ball, but we, uh, we are grateful, I guess, that, that the community has a facility that can operate in that fashion. Other questions from the commission? I think that's it for Lakeview Arena. John, thank you for your presentation. We appreciate the many different areas that you I have the privilege of working in and a lot of these are some of the most important areas for for many of our residents and really provide for the enrichment and culture for our community well thank you Your Honor. thank you and did time. i did i uh beat blake's time <laughs> <Yep>. hilarious <laughs> you had a lot more to cover <laughs> He only had three three funds. But, yeah. like those, <laughs> no, we appreciate you, John. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're still still our most popular so show, John. So thank you. <laughs>
Uh, so Mayor, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, that concludes our presentation for tonight. Uh, just a reminder, we'll bring it back up uh, Wednesday. The budget starts at 515, but as a reminder at 415, we're having a joint meeting with the uh, Marquette Township Board to uh, go over the joint water rate study that we do. Thank you. And as a reminder on the joint meeting with Marquette Township, that will be all via Zoom. So if city commissioners need a place to zoom in, let Sean know and we can coordinate that to avoid feedback, um, audio feedback, I mean. So that brings us to public comment. Public comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Do we have anyone? On yeah, the line none. and no written comment either. Nope. Okay. Public comment is now closed. Brings us to comments from the commission. I do think we've had ample time to discuss what we've had presented this evening, but if there's anything else, now is the time. Giving Commissioner Schlegel a minute here to see if he has anything, but I'm hearing silence. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Um, City Manager, did you have any comments this evening? Nothing. Okay, we will see everyone back here on Wednesday evening. We are adjourned at 7.31 p.m. Thanks, everyone.